almost had it. Ow, right in the tank. It's far so much more. Awesome, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. Stupid thing for runs. Catch you guys later. More to come. I know. Whole lot. Okay. So I'm performing traction surgery here. Uh, got the cover off. I need a freaking out wide angle lens or fish eye lens like Tom Martin, crazy British bloke have. Here's the figure that goes on here. And uh, oops, don't go anywhere. Our car. All right, we need a there. Coke wheel chuck. I got the motor out and I took it down to the beach earlier. And yes, I did have it in the water a little, but it's fine because it's waterproof. He says on there. And on the steering box, that's waterproof. And I heard that the engine was waterproof because some guy took the same exact car and drove it to the bottom of the pool. And uh, it was fine. But I thought a piece of sand got in the motor because I'd be driving it every once in a while, and it would slow way down and something's biting my neck. <coughs> now my throat has a thick one because my throat's itchy because I did that weird noise. Maybe that has something to do with it. Blech, let's get that stuff out of there. But it would go, and it would slow way down. And it would hog battery power like crazy. I was getting mad, but so I was like, all right, you know what, we're gonna take it apart and we're gonna clean it all out. So I am going to Take the battery out first off and get all my bolts in one spot. Like, right, let's put these guys in here. I know, I know which ones go where. So I don't lose any. Whoops, we almost did there. Just put here and there. And to operate on a Traxxas, you need a. Should come with the car if you buy the car new. Dang it, doesn't say what size this is. But you need a really small Allen wrench. And then this one doesn't say what size it is either. Hmm. Well, they're really small, but those are the two I used. But uh, I'm gonna go hose the inside of this out, fill the crap out of there, and uh, put it back together and see if that works. Alright, you guys stay tuned, because I need to fix this. Okay, so when you go to remove your motor, this has to be the first thing off to get those two screws out. And it has to be the last one. And then the trick to adjusting this is to uh, stick a piece of paper in there, close it, pull it out, and you'll get like an accordion. It'll accordion effect on the paper. I cleaned in there out, I didn't show it, and I cleaned in here out, and I dried it off. And I'm not going to put it back together yet, because I think the problem still might happen, because I was, I was doing this. You hear that? Yeah. 
You did it just a second ago. You'll have to listen to that again, but it made like a sound. Uh, we'll see if it'll do it. Oh, I did turn on here. Camper go pee pee. Track to surgery gone wild. There we go. Yep, you hear it? Hold on. I... That thing. Whatever that is. Hold on a second. Why would I be doing that? Nothing to do with the equation, sir. You hear that? Burn the tires off, then. Woo! That's probably not a good thing. Alright, I'm gonna take it for more of a test drive and I'll let you know how it turns out. Well, the piece of shit is still doing it and it really, like, I held the back end up. It really shook. It felt like something was in there bouncing around and I don't know, it's not the gears. I wonder if it's in the motor or the differential. I don't know. I'm gonna rip it apart after I'm done eating. I mean, absolutely apart and try and find out what's wrong. Stay tuned. Well, we found the problem, and I'm glad I tried this. And you know what? I'm not mad anymore, because uh, shit happens. But, uh... See? It'll do it every once in a while, and then it won't. Here. Let me set the camera here. I'll hold it. And uh, I can't really take the motor apart, so my motor is dinked, boys and girls. Not a huge deal. So, <laughs> seems like Dora and I are both SOL because his motor burn up. It doesn't go anywhere. And the bearings in mine are shot. Shit happens. What can I say? Um, wonder. Actually, wonder how much it would cost to get this rebuilt, if you can. I don't know why. I'm thinking that you can, and I have no no clue. <laughs> but I get the feeling you can. Stay tuned, cause I I don't know. I'll be right back. Well, I'm not mad about this, and even if I should be. It's not, uh, it's not worth it because, uh, because, uh, well, what's it going to get me? Nowhere. But, uh, I guess I'll just get a brushless motor. And since, since I have it halfway apart, I might as well take it the rest of the way apart and totally clean it. Like, take the, get all that stuff out of there. Well, maybe I won't take it apart, but like more apart, but I'm going to clean it out eventually. Uh, probably when I get back from the trip. Good thing that's waterproof because that's expensive. I mean, the motors are expensive, but hey, what can you do? I've only had this thing for probably, I don't even know if it was a month. <laughs> and the motor's already screwed. Ooh, yeah, it's tight. Very tight now. Oh well, you live and you learn, I guess, so uh, I don't know. I don't think we're really going to do anything else. On day two here, the four-wheelers are gone. We took them back up. And, uh... Both the cars are screwed. Oh, well. And I got eight minutes left on this card. That's okay, because I could do 170 in the other one, and I brought the laptop, so... You guys are going to have fun watching all this Adirondack footage. But stay tuned, because I'm going to keep watching, because I'm going to see... If we can get a ride in an airplane over a whole bunch of lakes, and I'll definitely record that. And uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to pack up and head to another campground. But I'll probably videotape the fire tonight a little or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, uh, anyway, guys, if I haven't said it yet, go subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I actually have no... I obviously have 80 minutes worth the video right now but uh okay whatever that's not all gonna go on
anyway, stay tuned for more Adirondack videos and uh, cause there's definitely more to come. Thanks for watching guys. Cold start. Oh, little smoke. Sort of. Anyway, I just had a thought. Well, what's he doing? Okay, I had to fix the mirror. Somebody must have pushed it. Anyway, I had a thought. If I haven't, I don't know how long the warranty is, and I'm gonna call the guy I bought it from uh, some other time. But I have his card in my wallet. Great place, it's in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Great guy that works there. Oh, I don't think his name's on the card. No, it's not on the card. I can't remember his name, but he's a great guy. And if you live in Pennsylvania, close to Harrisburg, it's a great place to stop. It's called The Hidden Hangar Hobbies, specializing in radio-controlled hobbies. 5450 Dairy Street, Suite 3, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 17111. Phone number is 717-565-1188. Obviously, the hidden hangar website. Oh, it's spelled hangar with an A. Anyway, so he's got tons of stuff. Tons. Oh, yeah, there's my driver's license. Driver's license. Anyway, I'm going to call him tomorrow and ask him how long the warranty is. Yep, the low memory light's blinking. And, and, what's with my voice cracking lately? I have no idea. I thought we were past that. Oh well. I know people who are in their 20s and still have that problem. Whatever. Um. If, the, if this thing is still covered under warranty and I can get a free replacement engine, that saves me some money, but eventually I'll still get the brushless. And I, I had a thought, I was talking to Nate on the phone, telling him about it, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should reduce the gear ratio so it won't go as fast, but it'll have more torque. And I, maybe I get to smoke the tires on pavement. Who knows? And then, uh, we'll see. But, uh, until then, I guess I'm gonna switch cards here in four minutes, but, uh, until then, uh, stay tuned for more. With the last three minutes on this card, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a Corvair Wild and walk up to a random car, three random vehicles actually, and uh, do a video. Here's a '88 Chevy 3500 four-wheel drive, just sitting here, a little crispy, and under there too. Uh-oh, I think the gas tank leaks. Um, the light comes on, that's weird. Looks like... What? Oh yeah, 118,000 miles. Um, kind of dirty, it's been sitting here for a while, as you can see. There's an old Ford, 4x4, four four, and another old Ford, 4x4. Four but, uh, oops, um, we're going to pop the hood if nobody's around. No, nobody's around. Don't tell anybody. Shh, be quiet. I don't see anybody up there watching. That's good. Oh, just a regular 350. Yep. I thought it'd be a big block. One battery. Uh oh. There we go. Hood got stuck. One minute left. Um. Yeah. Well. Good tires. That's a shame. Those are really good tires. Well, the other one on the other side was. Oh, not too bad. Yeah, decent tread. Too bad they're just sitting here. I mean, they're not even cracked at all. 
3500 Too bad. Too bad. Oh well. Next to a derelict camper. Piece of crap. Gonna run out of time here. Old 88 Chevy and two old Fords. And another derelict camper. And a big rock. Alright. Time to go. Got no, no time left. See you later.